it's um it's i'm selling james cook i i'm not a james cook fan i never have been i think he he lacks a lot of strength when it comes to his ability to sustain hits or take on hits or even keep his feet when he's you know working around towards the, the boundary so when i look at james cook as rb12 74 overall and I look at the guys he's kind of sandwiched in, even just at the running back position. We have Brooks at RB11, then Rashad White at RB13. I think it's much easier to make the case that both of those guys would demand a first plus in a lot of scenarios. Where I don't think in probably 80 plus percent of leagues, most most dynasty players are offering you a future first or even a current first for James Cook. So when I see that, the 25th and 26th uh, firsts are right behind him in rank. I think that's a place to start. But more or less, I think that with this valuation, there are so many op- opportunities to pivot. Okay, we could pivot up two spots. Bryce Young. I understand that I'm not a huge Bryce Young fan. But when I'm able to transition from running back to any other position that I feel I'm either gaining an advantage or getting the uh, – the positional scarcity, I'm going to do that most times. Or I can move up even kind of further if I want to go for Brooks, Kenneth Walker, maybe I go for Andrews or Worthy, because Andrews is eight spots away from from James Cook. And if I go down the ranks, then I have Rashad White, Kelsey, Jaden Reed, um, Debo, even Trey Benson, Josh Jacobs, Devontae freaking Adams, Mike Evans, Will Levis. So there's just, to me, there's more opportunity to move him to go get something at a different position that's going to score me more points on a week-to-week basis. We don't know um, what Ray Davis is going to do when he comes in. We we don't really know what this offense is going to look like. I do know he had seven top 12 weeks last year, which is pretty good. But he only had five games with four-plus receptions. And he only had three games over 100 yards in terms of rushing. So I think there's, there's opportunity where if you even see some of his workload come back and he's not breaking big plays because there are, there are a decent amount of, amount of games where he, he got a lot of his yardage on big plays, yeah. even fumbling the ball, recovering the ball and continuing to run with it. And we've seen that. And he had a lack of touchdown upside with only six. And I understand that touchdowns are flaky where like, I don't ever really try to project touchdowns because it just doesn't, it's so difficult. So you could make the argument, oh, these touchdowns are going to go up. Or you could make the argument, he's not much of a touchdown score. And with the addition of Ray Davis, once again, we don't know what that goal line work looks like, which it already was limited to begin with. Yeah, he had he had four goal line carries last year. So there's not really much opportunity at the goal line from the score touchdowns. It's got to be from further out. So there's to me, there's just a lot of what ifs, as well as I don't think he's as good as his rank anyway that I'd rather pivot to someone like a true game changer. Like even like if I talk to Vontae Adams, right. Um, I have him in my top 12 for dynasty and I get so much flack for it, but I'm going to have respect for the guys that give me game changing weeks that give me true. Yeah. Um, I'm playing two guys versus your one guy in this one position in my lineup. And I don't think James cook does that. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, when you look at like the, the advanced metrics on James cook last year, like they're not favorable. Uh, his yards created per touch of uh, 2.99 was 43rd in football. Um, his ru- uh, his rushing, uh, his, his snap share, only 55.1%. Who, w- who was the other running back there last year? Latavius Murray? Yes, like sir. you're not, you're not getting a, f- a legitimate full-time role with no competition for rushing touches besides your quarterback. And then your team goes and adds a Ray Davis, who I think is a little bit more versatile and can be on the field a little bit more consistently than a James Cook. James Cook, he had the second highest run blocking rating in football last year and did nothing notable as a runner except for occasionally breaking a big run. And his breakaway run rate was only 4.2%, which was 26th amongst qualified running backs. Like there's nothing that suggests that what he's doing on the big play side of things is overly sustainable. And realistically, like we're ranking a guy as a top 12 running back when there's just nothing about his profile that suggests he should be there. He's efficient as a receiver, but he doesn't get a ton of receiving volume. He's 
you know, last year he was fourth in rushing yards. He was eighth in receiving yards. But again, like we're talking about a guy who's not getting over 50% of the snaps. His team added a running back. And this is even including games where his his offensive coordinator change went from one of the te the teams that ran the least in neutral situations to one of the teams that runs the most in neutral situations uh, in Joe Brady. And he did have that that great four week stretch where he was running back 10, 12, three and two. And then that dropped right back off to 48, 48, 31. Like this guy, he had a really great stretch of the year followed by mostly like he was outside of the top 30 running backs in seven weeks. Like there's, there's nothing consistent about this game. He's not a workhorse. He's, he only broke 20 carries twice last year. Uh, as you mentioned with the receptions, like he doesn't get a ton of receiving work. He doesn't even run a ton of routes. We're talking like a 40 to 50% run rate route run rate. Most of the season. I, I just, I, I don't see the appeal at wide receiver or at running back 12. I only see downside. So that's why he is like a perfect sell candidate for me because this is a situation where the market, the market has started to catch up a little bit on fading him. Um, on DLF startup ADP, he's fallen to running back 15. But even at that price, like you're passing on guys in startups like, hold on, I'm going to scroll back down to him. I already lost him. That's how <laughs> unimportant his name is in the list that I can't even remember. There we go. Running back. Sorry, running back 14. So you're passing on a Javante Williams, who uh, I'm fine passing on. Um, but like if you're drafting a running back in that range in the 80s, like I want a guy like that's where these guys go in are like late 70s pick 80 and, and pass. Like I want a guy who's at least going to help me compete this year. If that's where I'm drafting these running backs and I can get a Derrick Henry at running back 16 prices, I can get a DeAndre Swift at running back 18 prices, Jonathan Brooks at 19, Mixon at 20, um, Kamara 23, Pollard 24, Ramondre 22, Montgomery. Like there's so many guys that are going to be more impactful on a week to week basis and don't run the risk of losing the touchdowns to their quarterback because that's what their specific role is or you know, they have an established receiving role. They're truly the guy in their offense, or they were signed to be the guy. Like James Cook feels very much like a guy who could lose his job to Ray Davis this year. And I don't even think super highly of Ray Davis. He was like a late second. I think he's my 23rd overall player in, um, in rook as uh, out of the rookie class this year. So it's not even like I'm super high on him, but he seems like a prime candidate to get replaced next year when there's a super strong running back class. I agree with that more than the Ray Davis replacement. Now I understand that Davis could come in, you know, blow, blow the yeah, it could be, he could the be garbage, staff, but he also could be the other way. So I, I, I just want to, you know, I, I'll respect the fact they're probably going to still want him on the field. Just that we don't know how much or in what, what situations, but just in terms of, the players that he's around they're way more in terms of alpha even though they're not true alpha but more true rb ones or like we said the aging aging wide receivers that are going to score way better you know week to week yeah it's it's a great great sell candidate especially with the other guys that are there if you want to hold on to james cook go for it but come back to this podcast if he gets replaced in 2025 and let us know how that's working out for you. Well, and last thing, we uh, we always say, and it is true, that the RB2 position is the easiest position to fill on your roster. So why not take someone who's most likely going to be an RB2 and go find yourself someone that can be a true difference maker or a different position? Like Kelsey is below him, right? We could go after Kelsey. Not saying that's going to get done, but per these ranks, that's something that the is being reported that is possible. Yeah, it's like you said, and, and that's what most of our cells boil down to uh, for everybody who's listening. Like if this is your first time listening to this podcast, you can go back and listen to every cell that we talk about. And it's always a guy who just has too many question marks to confidently have them at their rank. So or they're just bad or, the or they are just bad. Don't get me. Um, <laughs> Sky Moore. <laughs> noted hater is over here um but anyways There's let's Tony. let's transition over to our by candidates of the week so 